I'm going to talk about the meaning of this symbol capital D over capital DT. It's the material derivative. Yeah, it helps to consider the context that we're talking about, which is fluid mechanics. And you often you have you have situations where you know sometimes you're you're following. Let's say you have a uh, let's say you have a, something like a temperature distribution, and that's defined in stationary spatial coordinates, meaning those are the coordinates that are sort of rel relative to just the room that you're standing in, just stationary, whereas the material coordinates would be moving around with the air in the room, if you wanted to use air for the, the fluid that we're talking about. So, like, uh, the point that's labeled zero zero one would in spatial coordinates it always would be in one particular place in the room but if you're using material coordinates um, that that point called zero zero one would follow the wind wherever the wind went like one particle of the wind you could call zero zero one and then zero zero one would always be the label on that particle as it moved around so, but anyway, you've got this function defined in terms of the stationary spatial coordinates. And I'm going to say in, the, in the, this example that that's temperature. Now, uh, so the material derivative, in this case, you, you, if you're just doing the derivative and it wasn't the material derivative, you might do it at just one point and then you would, you would just see the, the temperature changing in that one stationary point. If you're doing the material derivative, that, that point needs to follow the fluid wherever it goes. So you can consider maybe one particle of the fluid and you're going to follow that particle around and you're going to keep track of what the temperature is. Now, so so if the temperature is defined with respect to stationary spatial coordinates, and you're you're, you're following this little fluid particle around, there's a there's a formula for the material derivative, uh, and that's that's this formula that, that's showing right now. You have capital D over capital D T equals uh, the partial of F over the partial of T plus uh, vector u dotted with the gradient of f and u is the velocity at a certain point in stationary coordinates This formula applies to this particular situation where, where you're following this point around along with the fluid. There's another situation where you're talking about a material derivative and you use this symbol. I mean, in the book, uh, they use this symbol capital D over capital DT. They're talking about following a volume around, and in this case, when you when you say you're you're taking this material derivative, you don't necessarily want to write it out as this form with the partial f over partial t plus you know u dot dotted with the gradient of f. All all the all the capital D over capital T really means is that you are using a volume that's moving along with the fluid. So if it starts off as a cubic volume, uh, if the fluid just moves all over the place, it's probably going to get kind of stretched and twisted into something that's not a uh, cube volume. And it's not cubical anymore, and it's just going to be kind of moving around. But but the the capital D over capital T just means if you want to know if you want to ex, if you want to kind of expand that the meaning of that out into a literal form 
what you're going to have to do is just consider the situ whatever you would need to do in order to take the derivative over a volume that's following following the fluid around that's what you have to do so this the operator capital D over capital DT is it's it's just defined to mean that you're taking a material derivative I wouldn't take it too literally to mean this particular formula you just have to keep in mind that it means material derivative and there, there's one point in the book where they say uh, it could be they could write it as just a regular derivative lowercase df over lowercase dt but they're, they're writing it with the capital D, D just in, to indicate to you that um, in this situation they're taking the material derivative now, my initial reaction to this was that the the symbol d over d t is since it's it it doesn't always um symbolically it doesn't always really mean exactly the same thing uh my initial reaction was it's sort of ambiguous, but I think you have to consider the context of fluid mechanics and it, the reason that it's not really going to be ambiguous is because you're nearly always talking about the, this concept of a a fl fluid that's moving around and it has certain properties and you can define these properties in stationary spatial coordinates or material coordinates that follow the fluid around and, and since you know that's basically what that's all you're going to be doing in fluid mechanics it's always going to be clear that you know if you put this capital D over capital DT and you're taking whatever you're doing if you got you you might be taking an integral and that that and that integral is over volume and and you make a statement that that volume is a material volume that follows the 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 uh, fluid as it moves. Then when you take the derivative of this thing, uh, you can use the capital D over capital D T just as an just as a reminder to the reader that um, you're you're following this volume around. Or I mean, as the book says, you could also use the lowercase d over lowercase d t because it, 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 since since you you've got the volume following the fluid around, it already is going to imply that um, you're, you're taking that material derivative. But if you were to take the, the d over dt and, and assume it was a very literal thing where it always expands to this this uh, formula that was shown with the, the partial derivatives and uh, the uh, gradient, uh, then it that's that's too brittle of an interpretation that 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 won't apply in a case where you're talking about a a volume that you've already defined as a volume that follows the fluid around because you're not really going to need to apply that formula the fact that it's it's you've already defined it as a volume that's moving around with the fluid is going to take care of the fact that it's moving around with the fluid